Alex Ross, and I'm doing my first CGC signing this year. It'll be the exclusive way to get my signature, and submissions are limited, so please send in your books now. I was uh, excited to get the opportunity to work on Captain America for the regular series, particularly because after a long period of trying these other looks for the character, they were finally returning him to his classic appearance, and I had let it be known that I wanted to work on classic looks of characters as much as possible. And luckily, he's one of those characters you can never completely escape his original design. And it just would happen to be that ta Coates would be writing this new series, which makes it even more of something to be a spotlight put on it. And he can bring a lot of topicality and a lot of introspection of what Captain America's symbol can mean today and what it's challenged by in terms of the times we live in. And uh, it's a perfect way to be involved with the project because I've always felt that Captain America's got a great history of being a character relevant to what was going on in our world, what was going on in American society. He's never been just this flag-waving character of, you know, like, hey, whatever America does, just go along with it because, hey, we're all about America. In a way, he was a character of contradictions. He's draped in the flag but he's always sort of running head up against these compromises for American ideals and what we should be keeping at our heart. What was visually very important for me is sort of a feeling, a gut impression I wanted to always give Captain America. And people can look back at my prior work from the 90s and 2000s and see where I was taking advantage of opportunities to illustrate him with this sense of how he had a much darker blue, that he had a, a costume that looked a little bit worn, it was like he was wearing a leather mask. All these things I was taking from study of the character that either I had thought through or other artists I've followed have thought through, and something that wasn't really making its way into the costuming in the movies, I wanted to bring through in my art, and now I get to do it on a regular basis where I'm trying to make a case for the original costume design but it's still an interpretation, thinking that it isn't actually such a foolish thing to interpret the flag as a costume because that should be a super dark blue. And once you take that into mind, it's a very striking looking character where he's almost black, white, and red. And if you darken those things up so much, it gives you a sense of an earthiness to his design and character that is very uh, strong for how he comes across. One of the first images that I wanted to create for a number of years now was a wraparound cover that would be my homage to a painting that uh, Storenko did. Um, that was itself a painting that he did back, I think, in the 70s that was a beautiful panoramic of Captain America's history with the invaders and with uh, some of his enemies illustrated on it as well as a giant headshot of him. So all those kind of elements are there, but compositionally what we were doing is not exactly the same. I didn't copy his poses, but intellectually, it's the same thing. It's taking a spark of inspiration from him and then giving my own sort of version of the same. And I got a chance to illustrate a lot of his 60s enemies and as well as Red Skull thrown in there. And uh, sometimes you're not gonna get these opportunities any other time than when you can make that happen. And they didn't ask me for a wraparound cover, I was pitching it. So luckily in this case, I could get them to go along with it and say, yeah, sure, why not? We're launching this book with a brand new number one and we want it to be as big of a deal as it can be taken as. And you know, taking advantage of the fact that it is ta Coates writing it, that will be a real strong thing that will get everybody to sit up and take notice. One of the exciting gigs I've gotten to jump into is a brand new series of Hulk covers where it's the return of the classic Hulk and where they've now kind of embraced this idea that the last time you saw him, he was getting killed. He actually set, Bruce Banner set himself up to get assassinated with the hopes that he could end his dilemma of always turning into the Hulk. And as the new interpretation is going, they're pretty much putting out there like, oh, by the way, we never mentioned this before. He can never die. He's immortal. And that's one of those things that they've always kind of danced around, figuring that like the human part of him would always be vulnerable 
when in fact now they can state, no, actually he's kind of impossible to put down for good. So there's meant to be a creepy factor that comes along with it. Um, when this new title change was explained to me, I immediately wanted to jump in there with a chance to design the logo, which I didn't necessarily redesign uh, to font face. I took the classic logo from the 60s, which they've used a lot of recently, and I just did the letter form changes to change, you know, incredible to immortal. Um, but then I also wanted them to try something new with the way that the letters could be kind of reversed out so that it's like a photo negative of the title. So it would have almost a sense of self-illumination. So when you see it, hopefully on the racks, it would stand out as being slightly different. And that you're really kind of getting this sense of him being like a radioactive icon of sorts. Um, but also for me, the big drive and satisfaction of doing the paintings is when I'm drawing Hulk, I'm always thinking of Jack Kirby's version because he only got to do a certain amount of stuff in the first few years of the character's existence. Not even all the original six issues before they canceled his comic. Um, he uh, designed the character and then had to hand it off to Steve Ditko and then he would come back on it and then Ditko would take it up again and so on back and forth. And then by the end of the 60s, they had like kind of a new look that softened up his brutish kind of impression of the character. And I think there's something uniquely human and also grounded in the roots of how he comes from Karloff's Frankenstein makeup, exaggerated. And that's what I want you to remember and connect with when you see the giant brow and the sense of way the features are, that there's something there that Kirby was just kind of pulling like taffy and it made for a phenomenal new character. One of the things I've gotten a chance to stretch my legs with because there was nobody else to do it when I was initially pitching my own comics ideas and storylines was logo design. And I don't feel that separated so much from the regular art of illustration that basically the entirety of a package is what you want to impact people visually. So given that a logo is gonna take up so much space on top of the artwork facing the public, you need that to read the way you want it to come across, emotionally, aesthetically. It all has a purpose to it. And sometimes if just what you want to connect with is an older logo that you liked or something brand new that you like, it's better if you take the reins of that yourself, at least initially in design. So a majority of projects I've worked on, from Marvels to Kingdom Come, to even recently stuff with, uh, I did some redesign work on the recent Hulk logo, that basically it's the way you're selling yourself to the public and instead of just being stuck with whatever logo that they make you be deal dealing with, um, it's better to have that kind of hands-on thing. And uh, I've designed what might not be a hundred logos, but I mean quite a few for all these various books because I've also worked on an odd group of characters here or there with single shot titles that only had the one use of a logo, but it needed a logo to design what what you should are meant to be feeling about this. And very quickly, the idea of what you think it should be is immediately in mind. It's not often a big search of like not having something instinctively. I have kind of a mental Rolodex of stuff I'll reflect back to and think, here's a title that will fit what I'm imagining. And very often it's connected to the subject matter that I'm reflecting upon.